What's going on, guys? Welcome to the... I do my hand motion even when it's a podcast. You well, if you're on YouTube. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Against All Odds podcast, the only podcast where Mimi and I give $100 to every single listener. So comment your address below. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Roll intro. <laughs> do that when you are doing voiceovers on the use computer. my hands mm -hmm. i could see that yeah it's just hard we're both hand talkers we are we're handsy we're hawkers <laughs> <laughs> all right well we've had an eventful day today with trying to figure out our life we have because the original plan the original plan was to basically leave this apartment today and move to a new apartment in Oriental Bay with a great view of the harbor, great view of the city of Wellington, um, and to Dai's apartment. And Dai is basically the grandma of Tyler Hornsby. He's the mom of Mike Hornsby. And the Hornsby's was the family that I was staying with in Karori. So we're mm -hmm. all set to go over there because she was basically going on a trip like we talked about. And we were basically going to be able to move into her apartment today. And I was really excited about it. And then I got an unfortunate text. And this text I got basically said, hey, you're all set to move in, but by the way, this apartment doesn't have Wi-Fi. And I, I don't want to be unappreciative because this apartment is beautiful. But, and I don't want to sound like a brat, but I can't live in an apartment without Wi-Fi. Yeah, we both work on our computers and our phones. We need Wi-Fi. That's like both of our business. And like, that's my thing. And it's not like I'm using Wi-Fi even just to, because I want to see Instagram. It's because it's like, I need to upload videos. I need to upload Instagrams. I need to be able to, my whole business, everything's pretty much built off of Wi-Fi. And, it, and it's even worse for me down here because I don't have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Like I have no cell phone coverage or anything. So I can't even have data or be able to send a iMessage or text or anything down here. So I need Wi-Fi to just do something as simple as receive what practice time what time practices and a message from my coach yeah so it just wasn't gonna work i don't think that's gonna be like feasible at all to be able to live there so now we kind of like we're panicking like trying to figure out where to go what to do do all that stuff um but we've i think we have most of it figured out now yeah so the week looks like this we're in this apartment until friday friday we go down to queenstown and we're there until Tuesday, right? Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesday. And then we come back here in a different apartment than dies. We had to get another Airbnb, but it's in the same area because we just got a gym membership. Yeah. So we can't change the gym. The good thing is the new Airbnb apartment is pretty much the exact same setup that we would have anyway. It has a view of the harbor. It's almost on that same exact street yeah, right Oriental at Oriental Bay. Bay. It's beautiful, two bedroom place. Like it's it's awesome. It's way more room than here, and it's a pretty really decent price um, that we found. So it, that's gonna be really cool. But um, but yeah, and you mentioned we're going to Queenstown. So because we have a buy this weekend, complete buy for the team which means we don't have a game for those. Like for if my grandma's listening to this, we have a bye this weekend, <laughs> no game. And I kind of just realized that early on the week. I was like, whoa, Mimi, we have a bye. You know, let's go, let's do something. Let's do something. We looked up flights and everybody has said, go to Queenstown, go to Queenstown, go to Queenstown. So we just booked some flights, booked Airbnb down there and we're headed down to Queenstown, which kind of made the whole process even a little bit more trickier, trying to figure out what to do with the rest of our luggage, the rest of our gear, like because we can't leave it here because this ends on Saturday. We yeah, because we're at... moving all these apartments while we're gone. It's like terrible timing. Yeah. So I don't know. We're moving like half of it today, <laughs> half of it Friday. Then we're going to the airport. But Then we're going to come back and then pick up our stuff because we're dropping off some of our stuff. If you're confused listening to it, then you're welcome to our last eight hours of trying to figure mm -hmm. out this and just trying to plan. Um, but I think we have everything situated. Maybe explain the plan. Um, I'm very excited to go down to Queenstown. And I and just in the timing of everything too, it's going to work out so nice with my body because I've been ramping up. I've talked about a lot of my vlogs, a lot of my videos, ramping up the intensity of my workouts, trying mm -hmm. to get the fitness up, try to train more. But in doing that, especially after the last game as well, which was a pretty rough game of me running up and down the sideline and attacking a lot, if you guys watch the game analysis, but I'm really, really sore. I'm really tired in my lower abdominals. And so like, I just was like, you know what? I need, I need three or four days off. And this is, everything has been perfect timing with that. So it'll be three or four days off in Queenstown to take my mind off of soccer because if I'm not 
literally taken away from the gym, yeah. taken away from the fields. I will go out and do something and it's kind of harmful to me because I need that break. So I'm really excited to go to Queenstown and have that break away from soccer, let my body regenerate and then also see, see Queenstown. Yeah, we've heard a lot about it. And yeah. we have some plans, but not everything is set in stone. Yeah. We know for sure we're going to go to, what is it called? Something sound? Milford Sound. Milford Sound, which we heard is like the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah. So we have a bus ride for like four hours, and then we have a boat ride mm-hmm. through it because it's like a lake or like an inlet or it's something. sound, yeah. Whatever that is. You don't know you never heard of that? Like Puget Sound? I told sound? you I didn't know what that was. So, I remember you were like, I don't know any of those words. <laughs> no, sound is like is like almost not a lake, but it's like Puget Sound is up I've in Seattle. I've never been to Puget Sound. So. Um but yeah, that's it's like a water inlet, a fjord. Oh, that's the other word I use, it's like a fjord yeah, with the mountains. I don't know what that is. A yeah. fjord is like where like a big valley with two mountains coming in. It's just called a valley. It's <laughs> a word we use. Yeah. So. That's a normal word. Yeah. But yeah, but you had a friend that basically... Yeah, so I know this guy that just went to Queenstown, and it was basically like his ultimate like top bucket list destination. So he just did a bunch of fun stuff, so I asked him what we had to do. And the first thing he said before he even asked any questions about how long we're going to be there for or whatever, he said, you have to go to Milford Sound. So I was like, okay, we already Which have that book. awesome, yeah, yeah. That was like the first thing, because I was like, I've been doing some research on Queenstown. Mm-hmm. I'm a big researcher, if you guys remember, one of the podcasts where I literally plan everything out what to do. So I was yeah. looking up the best things to do in, in he spent Queenstown. He all day yesterday. And uh, so I, Milford Sound just kept on popping up, popping up, popping up. And I found a really cool like bus ride out there, mm-hmm. cruise, and then a bus ride back. And the bus has these like huge windows so you can see everything um, up, to the, up to the roof. So I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be a really cool experience. And the pictures of it looked awesome. Yeah, I just Googled it for like a minute, but I didn't want to ruin it for myself. I almost just like stopped looking at the pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's also an ice bar in Queensland. Yeah, it's the biggest ice bar in Australasia. So it's going to be cold, probably. <laughs> in the ice bar or yeah. in Queenstown? In the ice bar. I and mean, it's going to be cold in Queenstown, too. Yeah. But um, but yeah, in the ice bar, it's like the biggest ice bar in Australasia. It's like everything's made of ice from the cups you drink out of to like the seats to the actual bar itself. I'm not going to lie. This sounds like my nightmare. <laughs> of cold? Yeah. <laughs> like, why would anyone want to go into something made of ice? Is this, I'm just going to go in there, get like one cocktail, experience it, and then go out. And then apparently Queenstown is like a big party destination. We- yeah, that's one thing that he said. I was so surprised. He said that there's like really good pub crawls. And he said that it's basically a city of just everybody wanting to explore and get out and do stuff. And he said that it was like the most fun he's ever had going out and partying. And I was like, what? Yeah. Queenstown? <laughs> well, we, neither of us really party. Yeah. We- so we don't, I mean, I'll probably have one drink at the ice bar just to experience it. And then other mm-hmm. than that, like my ideal nights are going to be going home, working, watching Netflix and that's about it. So. Yeah. I want to definitely check it out, but I don't think I'm going to like pub crawl or anything. Nah, but I'm not a pub crawler. Yeah, can you say yes? <laughs> I, went on the, I went on the pub crawl over in England with my family, and I just was not in my happy place because beer doesn't sit well on my stomach. Yeah. And I didn't like the English warm, like flat beer. And like my brother was and my dad were just in heaven. Like they were like, this is awesome. And, exper- and I'm like over there full bloated. Like, like can we like just not go to the next bar? <laughs> I mean, it's cool to experience it and to see the different pubs, but yeah. I'm not a big, I, I, I obviously, if you guys watch my vlogs, I don't drink really much. Like I'll show everything on the videos. So. I'm not, I don't really drink. He's a wimp. I'm a wimp. Um, the other thing that honestly in Queenstown, which is really big, that's the origin of bungee jumping. So Mimi's going to bungee jump. I'm going to bungee jump for sure. Um, there's skydiving. There's these like, these luges. There's lots of skiing. We will not be doing that. Mimi does not like bungee jumping or the any anything fun. If it's fun. Sorry, I'm a rational human being. It's bungee jumping. There's like 50,000 people. Have, there's like 500,000 people have done it and there hasn't been a single death. It's more no. dangerous to drive anywhere than it is to bungee jump or skydive. Not worth it to me. Mm-hmm. I've been skydiving before, and that was really, really fun. And he's I want to go bungee jumping. <laughs> um, but yeah, here we'll probably just be doing that cruise. We'll just be in seeing Queenstown, going on the hikes, going on the ice bar. Um, and yeah, basically just looking at the views and the scenes. It's just four days coming back on Tuesday, and I'm straight back into training. And then we have two more games left of the season. But I'm really, really excited for it. 
But um, yeah, I won't be doing skiing, skydiving, stuff like that. <laughs> no, we might go on like hikes. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know for sure what's hikes. really going on there's, there. But. Yeah, it, the only thing is in the winter, there's like, I even read it online. It's like some of those hikes might be closed because you need yeah, like the Yeah, I heard ice. that the conditions might not be the best Yeah, because it is winter. But. It should be really cool. And I'm going to bring my camera down there, vlog it so you guys will see it in the videos. Um, but the next vlog or two will definitely be no soccer, no working out really, more lifestyle because I need that break my body my abs need that few days of rest and mm -hmm. like i said the timing of it is so perfect where we have this off weekend yeah. today um it doesn't mean that we're extended another week here in new zealand because our game got moved to the end of the season um so shoot we'll have to be in a beautiful Darn. country a little bit longer How am i gonna go back to work <laughs> um but yeah so that's like what has been going on for with our lives over the last week or few days yeah and we are also planning our trip for after new zealand we're and not if gonna you listen, yeah if you listen to the premium podcast you'll hear where we're going yeah so those it's are really you, exciting our premium members know where we're going mm -hmm. but unfortunately i want to keep the majority of the audience it a secret of where we're going to go after season and that's just going to be a very quick thing stop um on our way back to america kind of on the way back to america and then i'm going to go straight into the next phase of trying to find a team working out off season blah 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 but yeah, this next trip as well should be really, really fun. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know. What are you looking forward to more, that trip or to Queenstown? <laughs> if you I, don't honestly, know. Honestly, I don't know anything else about Queenstown besides that sound thing. That's the only thing I've ever yeah. seen of it. So I don't really know. So I'm more looking forward to the other place because I've, I've just seen more pictures of it. Yeah. And it's kind of been like the idealistic place that your whole life for like one day I'm going to go there, you yeah. know, but I'm sure that once I get to Queenstown, I'm going to be like, this is breathtaking. Yeah. The, the pictures and stuff I was looking at, even like out of the apartment were so cool. Well, see, I'm the kind of person though that like, I don't like to watch a trailer before I see the movie. Like I don't like to know all that. So luckily you research everything <laughs> so that we actually have somewhere to stay. We are. Yeah. We are a really good combination because if it, if we were both like you, we'd get there and be like, I, I feel like the thing is we would almost miss that Milford Sound opportunity, you know, because you get there. Well, no, and you're I like, mean, I would I would find out eventually, but like, I don't want to know everything about it. Yeah, but I'm know? saying like the Milford Sound has to be booked in advance and you need to have like a day or two of advance to yeah, book I this cruise. Have done that. And so like, that's why I really, because I hate going somewhere and then coming back and be like, oh, you went to Queenstown. How was the Milford Sound? And people are like, oh, I didn't go. I'm like, you didn't yeah. go? That's like the thing you have to do. I hate missing out on that. You can book that there because he said he did. But. Yeah, but. But like it's just I got a, I got a good price. Okay. I, I'm good with the deals. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I just even though you, you probably figure it out there. I'm I need. Yeah, I more. call it travel agent Shelley when he's doing yeah. it because he gets so involved and like he won't get up, he won't go to the bathroom, like he's just on his computer all day long planning it, and then I just don't have to do anything, and then I get there and everything's <laughs> planned out. We have this day, we have a flight, it all works out. Yeah, uh, but. If you can imagine, I do get obsessed about that. Yeah. I have that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then the last thing of life updates is we have a new gym. We finally moved out of Club Kelburn. We were doing a, f a free trial at Snap Fitness, but now we booked that gym right at Oriental Bay. I think we yeah, talked about it. Yeah, it's right next to the new apartment we're going to be in. It's on the water. Like, literally, yeah. it like, juts out into the bay. It's beautiful. And it's nice there's a huge uh, pool right in the middle and then you work out around the pool so it's interesting i've never seen a yeah, gym like that before yeah. and it's so like it's right on the water and we we're walking past that we talked about this in the premium podcast as well mm -hmm. a little bit but like we we're walking by it oh voice crack <laughs> we we're walking by it and you were like why don't we go to this gym since it's right close like so close to our apartment i'm like yeah right mimi it's gonna be so expensive and like i get because it's just like beautiful and we go in there and it was like super chill it was a great deal for three weeks that we'd be living here mm -hmm. um and then like we went in and just like, I mean, it's not the best gym, like actual in terms yeah. of like equipment. There's like no mirrors and yeah. you're kind of working out around a pool, but yeah. it's cool. There's glass everywhere. The it's... main thing is the pool. And mm -hmm. then it's not, it kind of looks like, oh yeah, we got extra space. Let's put some gym equipment here too. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's ex everything you need. I mean, I don't need the full huge powerlifting setup. Yeah. He's weak. Yeah. yeah. I'm weak. I just give me the five pound dumbbells and I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, and then the best thing about this apartment is that since it's in the same room as this big pool, is it's warm. The Wait, pool apartment. is heated. Did I say apartment? Yeah. Oh, what the best you, thing about the new gym. About? The new gym. Yeah, it's warm. It's warm. It's like a greenhouse. So warm. So like I was like, you walk in there and you're like, oh my God, I'm starting to sweat already. 
So that that's what I love right there. I'm I'm gonna be really happy at this new gym. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but yeah. All right, so that's our life. That's pretty much half the podcast already. Mm-hmm. But there's been a lot to update you guys. And this is like, I love the podcast for this to update the life, like updates, because it's too much to say in a video. I don't want to sit down for 20 minutes to explain, okay, so, uh, you know, explain everything. While a podcast, I feel like you can talk about it more. Well, my vlog explains everything. Well, you're just better than me, I guess, yeah. at everything. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a new question for you. I love asking Mimi questions about her life or like just like deep down questions. <laughs> Because I think that... He it's likes a, to put me on the spot. I like to put her on the spot. I think it's good to know. And I like having deep conversations about what you want in life, what you want to do. And we've talked a lot about your goals, my goals, blah, 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 side goals, everything. But I want to know now, we have all these goals, but what is the reason you are working? What is the reason every single day that gets you up to make YouTube videos? What gets you up to write all these blog posts on your website? What gets you up? What motivates you? You know, mm-hmm. that intrinsic, um, that internal the intrinsic mo- motivation. Yeah. I feel like most people would say money mm-hmm. and then that would therefore lead you to asking what do you want but, with that money? And, I, and I, I hate, that's the thing. I really believe like, for example, I don't want to hear like the, and you said money, which is good because I want that selfish. I want the selfish ex- internal motivation. Well, I, I didn't want you say to be that was honest. mine. I'm saying that's an yeah. example. But I, I hate it when I'm like, oh, so why, like, what's the what's your goal of your business? Like, oh, I want to make a huge change in the world. It's like, you really are starting this business because you want to make money. Well, or you, you want to you start wanna learn this. You want to know the selfish reasons. The selfish reasons. There, yeah. there are lots of reasons. But, yeah. Um, mine would definitely just be freedom. Because I don't really care about the money. Um it's for me it's more so just freedom to be creative and to do what i want but unfortunately what i want to do is a very expensive hobby so like i want to decorate a really cool house i want to have lots of rooms in it so i can just decorate more rooms so i need money in order to fuel my passion Mm -hmm. but your main thing the reason for the money that you want to get is so that you can continue to be creative and not really have a budget or do that with the rooms you decorate and the stuff you want to create. Yeah, and I want I just I want to have the money to make investments into myself and my company and make products and cuz it takes money. And yeah. I feel like with with what I do like like if you're an artist like you can sketch something, it's really cheap. Buy some sketching paper and a pen and you can do it. But like with me, yeah. It's expensive. Yeah. Like it's a big deal. It's not just like you can't just go out and kick a ball, you know? Mm. It takes hard actual hard work no, <laughs> <laughs> um, You know but, my music teacher said that to me in third grade? Really? I, and I will will Why never a, what, forget music? this. What did you play? The recorder. <laughs> we you didn't have music class in elementary we all school. Had recorders. <laughs> but my music teacher, she said that like I was big on basketball and soccer obviously, and I just wasn't musically I didn't have a you? love for it. What? Yeah. And so she was like music is different. Like than sports, it's not just like oh dribble dribble shoot on goal <laughs> dribble dribble sh- oh basket like it takes skill and hard work and I was like I was so <laughs> third grade me was so mad yeah no I I don't agree with that at all but yeah. I just I do think that what I want to do requires a lot it's true yeah it requires end. a lot of money to actually get started so it does. so okay so that's really cool the every single day what gets you up to work is to literally make money in order to now take your business to the next level, take your goals of creating furniture lines, of designing apartments, designing houses. So like all that to the next level. Yes. I like that. So that's, and I really think it's good to identify these selfish goals like that. Your selfish, like dark desire of why you're working or why you want to achieve this Mm -hmm. because then it's true. It's, it's not like, Oh, because I want to help people design, um, have a gain of love for interior design. It's like, Okay, but that's not what's going to get you up. You don't, you know, I'm going to do a 12 hour work day today because mm-hmm. I want somebody else to fall in love with interior design. You do that because you want to take everything to the next level with money. I just want to do it. Like, I can't do it right yeah. now. All right. Everything yeah. I do is indirect. Like, and I then can't do I it. I think it's also good to identify it because then it's like when you do have money to not hoard it away or to not do it because you're, what makes you happy is would be designing a house, it would yeah. actually be to decorate it. And so that's cool. I, I, what's uh, yours? My dark thing. I mean, it's just, for sure. I, I know, I, I know it's, it's success. Like I'm addicted to not only for me to feel successful, but other people to see me as successful. And it sounds bad, but that is what truly the dark desire in me that really makes me want to work hard. Mm-hmm. I love when like even scoring a goal and that attention's on you, you have, he's successful, he's scoring. Or like when I signed my D1 um, contract to play division one college soccer, and it was like Matt Sheldon, you know, your name's up in the school newspaper. Matt Sheldon signs Division One contract. 
I was like, Did people love actually that. read your school newspaper? <laughs> yeah, my school newspaper was dope. It was sick. I don't remember yeah, Card- ever reading ours. Cardinal Times. I actually got featured in my school newspaper I remember that, like, a few that, months like, ago. Yeah, like recently they asked yeah. to interview you. Yeah, it was just about business and life. And it was like Matt Sheldon, former Cardinal, like pro soccer player. Yeah, I don't also. remember ever reading mine. Yeah, ours was really cool. Like ours, the, um, the whole like environment around it and the newspaper was really creative and cool. And it was like everybody read it. Like it was really? cool stories, featured students, like funny it was really oh, that's funny cool. yeah and it came yeah, out and like that. as soon as it came out everybody was like walking around like talking about it like that's how cool oh, it was no, yeah we didn't do that and it was all student i don't think I just, maybe i just don't remember yeah but i love that so that that dark success and mm-hmm. now for me like i want to work so hard and become elite and work so hard in my training all for success you know signing that pro contract same thing being a pro doing all that making hitting a hundred thousand subscribers you know it's all just feeds that need and like craving of success even with something as simple as like a coach when you do something really good and he goes yes matt yes you know Precky would be like yes matt that gives me such like a rush and then all i want is just to have that him say good job again and it's just like i'm just like a rat just being fed like success and then i just want more and more and more yeah you're easy yeah (laughs) (laughs) but that for sure is it so it's not like i and money is involved in that because I feel I view money as success too, but it's just everything success, broad term, and that's my selfish why. Like that's what gets me up in the morning, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think, like I said, like I I identified that early on, and I think that's good to identify yeah. it. And I love talking about this with people as well, because even with players, they're like, um, I'll ask them, you know, why do you want to be a pro? It's like uh, because you know I love it. Like, okay, well, what do you love about it? What Get deeper. You know, I don't want to just hear, I love soccer. Like, obviously, everybody loves soccer. But what is going to get you up at 5 a.m., you know, when you don't want to train and it's snowing outside? You know, what is really going to push you? You know, is it the money? Do you want to put your, like, get more money? If it was, they wouldn't be playing soccer. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But even if it does, I mean, I like Rom, uh, Romelu Lukaku. He, it was money for him. Like it, he has a story in this newspaper that was so cool to read. Um, it, but it, he wrote it himself and it was all about how he had, he was family was so poor that his mom was like mixing milk with water to, so it could go longer and they didn't have TV. And oh yeah. He was in the world cup. He final? was in the world cup it was for Belgium. Oh, okay. Almost. Um, but the whole, his whole thing about wanting to play in, in his why was all for money to help out his family and to get a TV so we could actually watch these games on yeah, TV. It was cool. so cool. I'm like, good. He identified that selfish reason of money. That's what motivated him for soccer. So yeah, I don't know. It's just awesome. I love that. And I hate, I hate that, that like Gary V calls it like that vanilla surface level. Like, Oh, I, you know, I want to be a soccer player to inspire a lot of kids. But, and it's like, yeah, that's a great thing. But tell me that selfish reason, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just, mean a, a dick but that's what I, <laughs> I i think so we did a q a you know on our instagram page against all odds instagram um just asking people to send in some questions and i feel like there there are a lot of really good questions but i've answered a lot of them before yeah I've done, we, we really love when we get a question that we've never had before yeah or that no one's ever asked and makes you and where we literally read it and like oh like mimi what do you think you know mm-hmm. and we got one of those and i really want to bring it up and go in depth about it but it was basically um, if I were to meet Cristiano, it was it Cristiano Ronaldo. It was Messi. It was Messi. But then I asked you, like, if you were to meet Cristiano yeah. or Messi. So it was like the basic idea is if I were to meet Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi, and I had one question to ask them, like, what would I ask them, and like why? And I was like, whoa, that's a good question, because so much of yeah, it is I saw like, that one. I was like, you're gonna like this one, because so much of it is like, Matt, how do I improve my left foot? Like, Matt, who do you like better, Cristiano or Messi? And it's like, yeah, okay, I've answered that. 10 million times. Cristiano. Um, <laughs> but, uh, well, I think Messi's a better player. Yeah, but you like Cristiano Ronaldo better. His yeah, work exactly. Ethic. You've heard it so Easy. many times, too. Boom. Next but one. But now if I'm thinking about it and I'm like, I was like, oh, man, do, what do I ask? If I have one question, you know, to ask him, what do I ask? And I don't think I would ask them about soccer. I don't think I would. I think it'd be more like what I told like that's so shocking. That deep down, because it's like, what are you going to ask about soccer, though? I mean, what would I ask? Like, hey, um, Cristiano, do you, uh, Cristiano, do you think uh, it, it takes more hard work or talent? You know, like, it's, okay. And then you just say it, and obviously you need. Like, well, yeah, they've already talked about it all before. Yeah, and, and I don't know. You see, their whole life's documented. So it's like, for me, I want something that, like, I want to ask them a question 
that I would read and go, ooh, you know? So I would ask them something deep down, like, Cristiano, what do you think provides you fulfillment, you know, out, in, even in soccer? Like, what, like, what is your why, you know? Do you love that fame where you have life? What would you get out of hearing his answer? I think it was just mindset. I like to know their mindset and how it works and mm-hmm. what drives them. Like, for me, it'd be like, Cristiano, in terms of soccer and fulfillment in life, you know, outside of family, friends, and the normal bs that everybody says what really provides you that fulfillment that gets you to work hard you know do you love that paycheck that comes in like what literally that question we just talked about what drives you do you like that success is it money is it fame you know is it a combination and then after soccer how are you going to feed that need for yeah that's what i said that you should ask them is like what like how they're going to handle retiring yeah just not playing anymore. because yeah because i think when it's like such a huge part of your life and i don't even think just like obviously he'll be involved in soccer one way or another you know he'll do something but i want to know how he's going to feed that need for success you know and cra- what he, where is he going to put that tremendous crazy work ethic that he has what's he going to put that into you know because obviously he has enough money he doesn't need to work but i don't see christian ronaldo you know i i have seen a lot of pr- big huge professional athletes who have that work ethic mm-hmm. you can't switch it off and go lie on the beach for the rest of your life and yeah in no, i can't see him relaxing at all. i want to know like where is he going to turn that to yeah that's a good i question. think it'd just be interesting to get into the mindset something that hasn't been asked but mm-hmm. i don't think i'd ask like a question of like hey what's it like to um be coached by zidane you know because then it's a surface level question gives you a surface level answer now i want to turn this question around on you obviously you wouldn't dream of meeting cristiano ronaldo or messi but i want to know if you could have a meeting and sit down and talk with anybody in the world, dead or alive. I want to know who it would be. I want to know why it would be them. And I want to know what you would talk about. What immediately comes to mind is my grandma, just because I never met her, my mom's mom. So I've, I've always thought it'd be cool to talk to her. And I just want to know more about my mom. Because I, like, I feel like, obviously I know my mom, but I also feel like she's kind of mysterious at the same time. So I just want to know just what she was like as a kid or teenager or whatever. Um, and this is the uh, grandma that you're named after, right? No, I'm named after her mom. So my oh, great-grandmother. Oh, okay. Yeah, Estelle was my great-grandmother's name. And I knew her, but my grandma died before her. So I didn't know my grandma. Okay. Um, but if it was like a celebrity or someone outside my family, definitely messy, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Um. <sighs> Honestly, I think it'd be really cool to meet and just talk to a woman throughout history who was like powerful or who like ruled or Joan of Arc or somebody. Yeah. Or just like any of the Queens of England, just like someone who just had like ultimate power like that. I just think it'd be really cool to talk to. I don't know if she would say much. She doesn't seem like she talks very much. So I don't know. Yeah, I like that. Honestly, not like one specific person comes to mind. But I think that would be really cool. I think it's just because I'm reading a lot of books right now about England. And the history and, of England. Yeah, and I took, uh, when I studied abroad there, I took um, a, a history class on, like, the British Empire. And I just find it all really fascinating. But Cool. I like that. Yeah, that's my Is answer. Is there any, um, so you literally, what would the question that you would ask the woman of power? Oh, that's a good question. Was it like, yeah, you'll sit down and talk, but, like, what are you going to talk about? I would be interested in knowing, I mean, obviously their role plays a part in it, but I would just want to know how, as a woman, she gets taken seriously, you know? And like, I just, I would want to know like how her experience was with being in charge, having control. Cause I feel like, especially the first per- person perspective of it. Yeah. Just cause I feel like, especially throughout history, I mean, even now too, though, like it's really hard to be taken seriously, I think, as a, a woman or a girl or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think if it was for me too, I don't know if I would actually choose Cristiano Ronaldo to talk to. Like if I had a choice. You know, that was just the question yeah, that was asked. That's a good point because he has been interviewed a million times. Like, would you want to talk to someone who hasn't? I, yeah. I would probably say... Um, I think because the person who gave me the most impact on my life as a kid and gave me the most motivation ever was Michael Jordan. 
Like he was the one that got me to start training and working out. Even if it wasn't for soccer, he's the one that really inspired me, I guess. And he also, I think even to this day, he has like one of the craziest mindsets of competitiveness, of work ethic, of just everything Mm -hmm. in the world. And so I think it'd be Michael Jordan or the author of the book that I read, Relentless, Tim Grover, who was actually Michael Jordan's trainer. And I would want to just sit down. If I could have a dinner with them, those two, and sit down. But would you, like, what would you want to ask Tim Grover that's not in his book, though? Because he has written down, like, all of his thoughts and feelings, you know? Yeah. I would, I mean, I probably would just, even though I've heard it and read about it, I would just want to talk about it. And especially with Michael Jordan and hear their experiences of that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just want to see Michael Jordan's competitiveness firsthand. I want to, if I could even better do a workout with them. That would be my dream. Not to sit down and have dinner because it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to be like, yeah, take me through a workout. Take me with you. I just want to be a fly on the wall that just does the sets behind Michael and does all that stuff and just see and just watch, you know, and learn. I think that'd, that'd be, be cool. cool. Yeah, that'd be my dream. So, so Michael so, Michael Jordan, <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> Someone out there, make it happen. <laughs> yeah. We got big news besides the dinner with Michael Jordan that's going to happen here. We have even bigger news. Mimi, do you, want to, do you want to share your news? Yes. Shall I propose? <laughs> this is... Uh, no, 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 I did not. Yes, you did. No. Stop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I got my first... What would you call it? Promo? Yeah. Promotion, I don't know. Yeah. Someone paying me to say stuff? Mm-hmm. First time. Feels good. So I quit my job not even a month ago, right? You quit kind of. July 4th was your last day. So okay, not so even not a month. even a month. This happened like last week, actually. Okay. Um, someone emailed me and they just said, hey, we have this product. You know, this is our company. Um, would you be interested in giving us a little, what would you even call that? I don't want to sound. It's a promotion. Yeah, promotion. Can you promote our product in your video? It's and a promotion. And just because it's the first one I've gotten doesn't mean like that's why I took it. I actually looked at the product. I looked at the website. I watched the video that they showed and I was actually like, this is pretty cool. And I showed you, I was like, I actually really like this whole concept and the aesthetic of it and everything. So I said, yes, sure, I'll do it. Because that's what I, I warned you about. I was like, don't sell out, you know, yeah. because that's, I think it's bigger, better to delay that gratification of selling out now for a product that you don't like and losing people's trust. Mm-hmm. And that's why I turn away over majority of the offers that i get to do promotion my video and i only go with stuff like skillshare oh wow no i'm now i'm sponsoring the video but like skillshare um the app band scrimmit app like stuff that i'd be like you know what i really think my audience would actually benefit yeah and that's what i felt too because this well i don't know if i should talk about the company on here but it's basically like a gifting service you know you can order flowers or chocolates whatever get it delivered but this one they more specifically wanted to target someone like me who would have clients and that you'd want to give them something and especially right now since i'm in new zealand i'm like you know what that actually works out perfectly because i actually am working with some people back at home and i can't give them anything from here yeah. and that's one thing that i learned being in a business i think it applies to any business you want to treat your customers really well and you want them to feel like family and you want yeah. them to you know to feel appreciated and not just like someone else you know that's giving you money so um i just think it would be really nice to actually use this company and use this product and give my clients something yeah and i also think that's a huge milestone um not just because it's a promo and like it's your first one but also just because this is clear cut evidence that your youtube channel your business is being monetized you know Mm -hmm. because you're making monies and you can make monies uh make monies you can make money on you know internet a million different ways but to have that to start to get that those dollars coming in and the first promotions then you can start to get the first ad revenue then you start to get the first whatever products sold it gives you some like backing to your business yeah because we were talking about this question of like how do you know if you are being persistent. Is that what the question was? Persistent uh, it's perseverance or... versus delusion. Perseverance versus delusion. And I feel like when you accomplish these little tiny milestones, they make you realize that it's not delusion. Yeah. That I am persevering and that something is growing, like something's happening. Because you need these little things to make you feel like... Yeah, and not even feel like it, but actually 
to show that it is, you know, yeah. it's not just feel like it, that it is growing. Because it's such slow growth. Yeah. And it, I mean, that's not a bad thing because we always talk about how slow growth is almost even better because you know it's like organic and it's natural and people... It's not a fad. Yeah, it's not a fad because a lot of people will shoot up to a million followers and then you'll forget about them the next week. Yeah. So, you know, it's when you have this slow growth, you need these little mm -hmm. milestones just to keep you going. Because that's how like I knew like when I was making... You know, when I had zero subscribers on YouTube and I had just a couple thousand on Instagram and I was like spending eight, nine hours a day trying to build and create content and just create mm -hmm. my brand. And I would have these little things of like someone commenting, be like, I love these drills or someone tagging their one friend in one comment, like check out this drill. I and that's knew, the best when someone tags yeah, their friend. You're like, I knew <laughs> it's like a little thing. It's like, this is going to be bigger. I just need to reach more people. I need yeah. to build it. And the same thing, like that first, that very first online training program I sold, you know, that very, very first check I got from YouTube, from ad revenue. It's just all these little milestones that you know, this isn't, I'm not delusional. You know, it's going to work out. And I apply that directly over to soccer as well. Mm -hmm. You know, quitting and dropping out of college sounds drastic. But to me, it wasn't a delusional dream because I had played with the San Jose Earthquakes U23. I had been the lead, leading goal scorer there. Mm -hmm. I had coach, uh, my coach there, my coach in college, telling me you could be, you can play at the professional level. I had scouts yeah, talking so to me. It wasn't I had delusional. agents hitting me up. So at that moment, I was like, "This isn't delusional. This is a practical. It's, it can, if with it's still a chance. You know, hopefully I'll be able to sign a pro contract. But it's not in delusion. You know." And that's something that's huge. It's like, I see these kids and stuff and I, I hate killing dreams and being like, no, it's probably not going to work out. But I get a lot of emails or questions or comments being like, hey, you know, I'm 22 years old. I've never played on a, a, a organized team before. I've just started training on my own. I want to make it pro. I'm thinking about quitting my job and going over to Europe, you know? And I'm like, there, do you think, you know, I'm not saying you can't be a pro. I'm not saying that you can't improve. I'm not saying you can't even get on a great team mm -hmm. but there instead of de making that delusional almost huge step over there and sacrificing all your life first get on a team you know that's not a delusional goals to get on any team then try to push up to a high level team amateur team then try a semi-pro team you know these steps yeah and then once you are succeeding and and doing well at the semi-pro level and you have opportunities coming up and you have stuff then that's not delusional to take that huge step to become a pro, you know, and quit everything. But definitely perseverance versus delusion is, is I think, a huge talking point. And I just want to make that, you know, clear of, it, of like have dreams, goals, and ambitions, but make it a plan. Don't just be like, yeah, you know what? Anything, anybody can, be, I can become a pro. Anybody can become a pro. I'm going to throw away my life right now, even though I can't become a starter of my U15 team. And I wasn't a starter of my U15 team either, but I didn't go from U15 and hop on a plane over to Germany. You know, I made it a goal to be a starter of my U15 team, then on my U16 team, then to go play in college, mm -hmm. baby steps. And that's why for your business and everything and your dreams, it's like, I don't see delusion because it's starting, it's growing, it's making money. Yeah. I swear it's working. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah. But that's just one thing I wanted to talk about a lot because it's... It's a tricky subject to, to balance that line of, mm -hmm. as, as the person responding to these emails or questions to not be that same person who bashed on me when I was a kid and I said I wanted to play in college. And they're like, yeah, it's not going to happen. You're not good enough. I don't want to be that. But at the same time, I don't want to be like, yeah, go buy that ticket right now and then have them go over there and realize that, look, if you haven't played on a team, you're not going to get a trial. Mm -hmm. And then going back to the beginning of the podcast when we were talking about... Um, how we're going down to Queenstown. It came at a good time for my body. I want to just touch on that a little bit with how I've been feeling. Yeah, I want to know too because I feel like I don't even know where you... How I'm feeling? Yeah. I, I, nev I never know. Like, because I thought, I thought you were 100%. Like, that's the vibe I was getting. And then it's always like, there's always like a little setback. Yeah. And I know that's how all injuries are. Everything is. It's, it's new. You're getting better, 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 better. And then you have, you know, you drop down 10%. Then you build up 25%. You drop down 10%. And I would say last week I got to a point where I was like, I feel 100%. But then the problem is, as soon as you feel 100%, you know, you, you push your workouts because that's the only way to improve is to push your workouts up to the next level mm -hmm. to start sprinting faster, to start lifting more, to start 
training harder. But then with that, you're taking your body to a place it hasn't been in a year. And then so you're going to have some soreness, you know. And so that's exactly how I feel right now. So you're on the little... I'm on the little soreness. Now, the Mm -hmm. thing is, if I were to continue to push it and push and push and push and keep on ramping up my workouts, I would keep on going down, down, down. And I just feel right now like I could I could 100% play a game right now. And it's just not even it's not even pain. It's just a little sensitivity, tightness, soreness in my lower abdominals because that that body part hasn't been working for a year, you know, at that level, like I just said. And so it's, this is why I tell kids is like, listen to your body. My body right now is telling me like, look, I handled that workout. I did it. I did it, homie. It's all good. But I need about two or three days of break. Mm-hmm. Give me some rest. Get some protein in me. Build me up stronger. And then let's take the workout up to the next level next week. The problem is this process, it goes over weeks and weeks and weeks. And it's having that yeah, patience. Yeah, it's hard to not like focus on the highs and lows too much. Yeah. Because like if you, if you, like as you always tell me how like it's like a roller coaster and you can't get too high and you can't get too low mm-hmm. because you're going to get really disappointed, you know? Um and I can I can totally see you doing that because even last week when you felt great you weren't like running around like saying that you felt amazing. I'm, and, a, I'm back. Yeah, like it's almost like you, it's kind of like a quiet little like yeah I feel good. Yeah, I feel good right now. I'm like okay he's on a high but he's not showing it. You know I have to figure out like where you are on this thing because you don't show it very much. And even here I'm on a low with how my body's feeling. And then in a low this is literally a high two weeks ago. Yeah. You know, but I'm not getting down. I'm not getting depressed. I'm like you know what? Let's go to Queenstown. Yeah. Take a little break. It'll be good. And I'll be on a high next week and the same thing. Like, okay, my body feels good. Take a, You have to be, uh, you have to take a step back, cut out all emotions. Yeah, that's what it is. You just it. can't get like attached to it. You Which is why I don't emotional. talk about it because I feel like talking about, you know, my body brings in emotions. Yeah, but then people around you are so confused. Like, I have no idea. But that's, Half the time, that's honestly how, how I deal with it. Because if I like even talking about it now, like, yeah, it's, it's okay. But then even then I'm like even talking and mentioning how it's a low in my brain. I'm now even like, am I in a low? You know, it's just like just little tiny thoughts. We well, don't talk about it anymore. And so it's I don't know. Just uh, yeah, body's not feeling the best. We'll see. And I was just like, yeah, we'll see. You know, take a few days. But am I worried? Absolutely not. I feel so good. But I just don't want this to continue to continue downwards. And um, I feel like this is something you can really only experience if you've done if you've gone through it. Yeah. You know, talk to anybody. I mean, I, I even would talk to people who had different injuries. Chris Schultz. Matt Wiesenfarth, you know, who had ACL surgeries. Chris had double hip impingement surgery and an ACL surgery. And I remember like, I had to <laughs> I had to drive them both to class after they got their ACL yeah. surgeries. They were both on crutches. It was funny. I was yeah. like their little chauffeur. But like just, yeah. <laughs> but just talking to them about <laughs> the mental battle of like and the little tiny highs you get, the little tiny lows. And I think it literally was summed up by um, a guy who played over in the English Premier League. I think for Southampton, uh, Richard Chaplow, when I was over at um, Orange County Blues, we were sitting down together and we were talking about something. And I think I had like a really bad performance or something. I think it was against LA Galaxy 2 after that game. Not my best performance. Every It felt like, felt like every single pass I met, like hit got intercepted. And I just was like down on myself after the game. And he, he like, we were talking just on the bus ride back or car ride back. And he's like, look, you know, you can't get high, too high on the highs. You can't get too low on the lows. And that like, like, you know, when someone says something and it hits you, you're like, I never knew where you got that from. Cause you always said that. Yeah. And that's where I got it from. And he, it was like my first fully professional year as a rookie. And he said that I was like, it's, he's like, you can't, and I even thought about it. Cause I would get so high on the highs and so low on the lows. And now like, I, like I would go this, my roller coaster was huge. And now my roller coaster, as I'm getting older, it's yeah. evening out, you know? Cause if, like, even in this injury, at the first little, you know, because, you know, you're rehabbing, 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 that first setback, I would like, it kept me up at night. I was so worried. And even as it's going on now like this, it's like, I'm not, I didn't, I slept fine last night. Got a nice 10 hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> 10 hours. But yeah, I mean, that's just, I just want to talk about it because I feel like, you know, I don't want people and people, it's so hard for a lot of people to understand. Like, I'm, I know, you know, this is a problem with putting your life on social media and people don't know the full story. I'm going to show, I'm going to Queenstown. Well, don't make a bet. I bet there'll be one person who goes, you think going to Queenstown is going to be the best for you to be, get a pro contract? You know, some comment yeah. like that. It's not. It's gonna, and it's the same thing happen. with the, as I've built up YouTube as well, the comments and the, those phrases, it doesn't, it used to bother me, but now it's just, I'm really good at brushing stuff off. 
kind of the same thing. Don't get high on the highs, on the good comments. Don't get too low on the bad comments. Anyway, guys, we have to go. I don't know how long this podcast was. We forgot to time it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Mimi, what's up? How you feeling? Ready to move. Ready to move. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. If you guys watch on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, comment, like the video. If you guys are listening on wherever you listen to podcasts, do whatever you do on the podcast. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.